Sarah's here this morning. Can you really be mortgage free? That's everybody's dream and desire. It is, isn't it? I think it's sort of, you know, I think it's something that people haven't talked about for a while because people say, oh gosh, you want to get on the ladder and then the property ladder and you want to get your mortgage. And, and actually, the truth is, nobody wants a mortgage. Nobody, everybody yeah. dreams of not having a mortgage. Bit, use that word saddled with a mortgage <laughs> for the rest of your life. It's like, oh. <laughs> but, nine, but nine people might even think themselves lucky to be saddled. It's actually yeah. been able yes. to get a mortgage. It's so hard to get one. Yeah, and everything's so, so expensive. So I suppose, um, what this show is really about is, is there another way of looking at it? I mean, you can go the conventional route where you save enough for a deposit. I mean, you obviously can't, can't buy a house with no money mm -hmm. because that's not possible. But, but you save enough to, to get a deposit. And then do you do the conventional route where you yes. put your deposit down and then you get a mortgage? Or is there another way of living Ooh, that's you cheaper? Come up with like, no. what, what example of... Um, well, there's, there's lots of examples that we're following in, in the series. Um, actually, one really inspiring couple who are really brilliant, they decided to pay off their mortgage quicker. So they paid it off in eight years, not 25 years, by just really being careful. And every time they had you know, a bit of extra money, they'd pay off their mortgage. And of course, the interest, they saved 130 grand in interest. Over that, pay over over that, that period. period. Yeah. Because actually, when you pay your mortgage off, more than half of it is interest, is interest mm. rather yeah. than the actual debt. Well, Sarah, um, one of the fascinating things about you is I, I, I always I love watching you because you give this fascinating advice, fantastic advice, which no one ever accepts. <laughs> you go in there and you say, don't build a bathroom there, put the bedroom there, all that sort of thing. But we're going to change that this morning, right? You know, my husband says it's because I'm so irritating. <laughs> It's probably true. <laughs> People often talk about adding value to your house. If you don't yeah. want to move at the moment, but adding value to your house. And Paul has said... Because if you asked, add value, you get it back yeah, eventually What, what is the it. best way to improve what you've got, improve the value of your property without spending thousands? So... Well, there's lots of, um, the, the obvious ways, if you add square footage, you generally add value, but that's not always. So, you know, be careful if you build all over your garden and you've got no garden and six bedrooms, then that's probably not adding value. However, but adding value at a, at a low cost, a, a lot of it is to do with using every single square footed foot yeah. that you've got. And there's a lot of waste of space inside and outside that people don't make the most of. So if you don't have a garden, but you've got window sills, put window boxes on, you then end up with a garden-ish, mm -hmm. but without actually having yeah. the square footage. We have waste of space in corridors. So there's sort of piles of coats that are and shoes in, in, your, in your hallway. Think about having clever uses of storage so that actually you make that space feel bigger and you have stop and stay. And 